poem today is titled, I Am a Blend. My Heavenly Father, high above the clouds, I can talk to you in a whisper or cry to you out loud. What a wonderful Father you are, listening to each prayer. You know my every thought, you know my every care. When I call upon your name and ask for your direction, you listen and you answer me on down to my protection. I may only have time to speak your precious name. I can cry out, Jesus. To you, it's a prayer just the same. You hear me when I shed my tears, my heart aching inside. When I want to forget it all, to run away and hide. You are there through it all, through the calm and the storm. You take away the chills of life, keep me safe and warm. You go out in front of me and get my way straight. You follow along behind me, closing dangerous gates. You know me from the inside out, and still you love me so, caring for me no matter what, wherever I go. Your love and care is powerful, too much to comprehend. You're with me each and every day. Yes, I am a blend. A blend of God the Father and Jesus his Holy Son. Add in the Holy Spirit, I'm a blend of three in one. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for caring so much for me. Enough to send your only son to die upon that tree. He died to take away my sins, giving me new life. I can live day to day, giving you <clears throat> my pain and strife. You take away all my pain. You give to me sweet peace. When I give you all my cares, yes, everything I release. Thank you that I do not have to live in doubt and fear because you walk beside me forever you are near. I praise you, Father. Your hand is upon me from the heavens above. You hold me gently in your arms and cover me with love. My mind is clear. My heart is set to worship you on my path, to follow in your footsteps and keep my soul from wrath. Help me to love the way you do in sickness or in health, knowing when I walk with you, I am living in your wealth. Praise your name. Can you feel his hand on you? Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to be together. But more important, Lord, to hear you speak to us. This morning we pray, Lord, that these words will be yours and not mine. That your Holy Spirit will impress upon each of us the mission that you have for us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. This morning I want to talk to you about the leaves of autumn. I want to begin today with a very simple parable of Wyoming read just the first verse. I'm going to even read an abbreviated version of the entire parable. It's found in all three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, the version that I like best is uh, Mark, and I'm going to read from Mark 4.3. Jesus said, Listen. Behold, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Some fell on stony ground. Some seed fell among thorns, but other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Jesus told a simple story, a simple parable, right there in the view of a man planting his field so that the impression would be made of their mind of the seeds that were being sown. 
Later that day, Jesus explained the parable to his disciples, and I'm going to give you sort of a brief synopsis of Jesus' explanation. He said, I am the sower, and by extension, so are you. Um, it'll be your responsibility to sow when I'm no longer here. The word of God is the seed. And the spirit of God awakens a desire in a person's heart for this imperishable treasure. And then those that are good ground hearers take it to heart, keep the word once they've heard it. We're going to be talking about planting seeds today. Um, that is the mission that God has given us as a church. I'm sure some of you have heard my testimony before, and I'm going to give you an abbreviated version this morning. Um, 1976 was a really bad year for me. I'll not go into a lot of the details, but I was extremely uh, distraught. Um, in the midst of all of that, I had left my childhood faith. Uh, my neighbor invited me one night to go to uh, his apartment. I thought he was inviting me to a party. I was quite surprised to find out that I was invited to a Bible study. Um, <laughs> but nevertheless, I went. But as I listened to each of these young men, it was only young men there, I as I listened to them each tell their story, I realized that I was each one of them and that this is what I really did he hear? In fact, I heard my grandmother's voice in the back of my head, you know, listen, this is what you need to be doing. Well, as, as the weeks progressed, I started going to church with these young men, and um, I began to get a lot of pressure from the pastor. His name was Dan Allison to be baptized. Um, so he scheduled a baptism for me as soon as I would allow him, which was in December, uh, specifically December the 26th, right after Christmas, December the 27th. And I felt that I needed to talk to him because I felt like he was kind of rushing me a little bit into this. So you know, I sat down and talked, and I told him that I had been baptized. I was a Baptist. I grew up a Baptist. I had already been baptized. I really didn't understand why I needed to be baptized again. And he said, well, we believe unless you are baptized and become a member of this denomination, you're going to be lost. Wow, that didn't ring exactly right to me as he was explaining it to me. And then I said, well, let me make sure I understand what you're telling me. My grandmother, who is the most saintliest person I've ever met, who is a faithful Baptist, you tell me that she's going to be lost because she's not a member of this denomination? He said, yes. He didn't even hesitate. It just didn't sound right. I said, I need to think about this more. We need to reschedule this. On the way home, I was very, very upset because, you know, you think about it, you're planning to be baptized that day, and then all of a sudden, you're not. And on the way home, I was just kept thinking, Lord, this just can't be your church. So that afternoon, I got home. I remember it just like it was yesterday. I went upstairs. I got down on my knees, and I said, Lord, if you will show me your church, I will become a member. As soon as I said those words, I heard the mailman drop something in the mailbox. I had a mailbox right on the outside of the door. I heard it bloop. I got up from that prayer. I went downstairs and I opened the mailbox. And in that mailbox was a brochure similar to this right here. It was an invitation to a series of meetings. And as clearly as you hear me speaking, I heard God speak and say, this is the answer to your prayer. I went the first night and I attended the next four weeks and 44 years ago yesterday, January the 29th, 1977, I was baptized into the Raleigh Seventh-day Adventist Church. What I want you to see this morning is the power of God's Word. This brochure is just not any piece of paper. It was God's personal invitation to me. And realize what I'm saying to you this morning. I received this piece of paper, this brochure, 
And four weeks later, I was a baptized Seventh-day Adventist. And I want you to think about all that God had to do to prepare me to be ready for this piece of paper. He had been working months in advance to prepare me for that moment when the mailman would drop it in the box. That Sunday afternoon that I made that prayer, God anticipated that prayer when I asked him to show me his church. And in that very moment when the mail dropped, the seed was sown in good ground. We're talking about planting seeds this morning. Some of you remember Carla Allen. Allen. How many of you remember Carla? See a couple of hands, three hands. Um, Carla's one of the sweetest Christians who's ever been a member of this church. In 1985, Carla received one of these brochures in the mail. It looked like junk mail to her. She went to throw it in the trash. It stuck to her hand. It wouldn't go in the trash. She just brought it back up and looked at it and opened it up and read it. And then when her husband Wayne got home that afternoon, she said, I want to go to these meetings. There were a series of meetings that John Earnhardt was holding here in a local convention center. She heard God's voice telling her that she needed to go. She and Wayne, weeks later, were baptized as members into this church. Um, he was a deacon in the Baptist church, Sunday school superintendent. She taught the young people in the Sabbath school class. And, of course, she was a beautiful singer. Some of you have heard her voice. But she heard God's voice in just that little piece of paper. I was a pallbearer at... Carla's funeral here in this church seven years ago. Or maybe more, I'm not sure about that. It was, it was longer than that, I'm sorry. Um, typo. I never met a more loving and compassionate Christian than Carla. We're talking about planting seeds this morning. In 1976, Ralph Cole worked at Liggett Tobacco Company as an engineer. Um, he and his wife were active in the Methodist church. One of his co-workers, New Ralph, was a Christian, and as a gift one Christmas, gave Ralph a copy of the Great Controversy as a Christmas gift. Ralph heard God's voice, said, you need to read this. So he started in January and sat down, and through the month of January, he read this book. He went to his friend and he said, Dan, I want to talk to your pastor. Ralph met with the pastor, Jay Gallimore. Some of you may know Jay. And started studying with Jay. And a few weeks later, in 1976, Ralph became a member of the Raleigh Seventh-day Adventist Church. He was one of my friend's and mentors when I became a Seventh-day Adventist. We're talking about planting seeds this morning. In 1950, Laura Cox found a copy of the Signs of the Times, this little special edition about the Sabbath, tucked away in an old sales magazine. She pulled it out and she heard God's voice, and he said, you need to read this. She sat down and read it several times. She got her Bible, and she studied what she had read. And then one Sabbath morning, she finally got the nerve up to take her and her son, Kenneth Cox, to the local Seventh-day Adventist church. You know, the rest of the story, Kenneth Cox became an incredible evangelist in our church. We're talking about planting seeds this morning. In 1988, Jerry Carlton was listening to WPTF radio in Raleigh. A program played each noonday uh, entitled The Voice of Prophecy. 
And each day they advertised a phone number. They said, call this for free Bible studies. Jerry called that number one day. And she signed up. They sent her the, the lessons. She completed them. She got her graduation certificate. And then waited. The pastor decided to have a series there at the church and we decided to just invite the people who had been responding to the voice of prophecy and the other ministries that the church had. And we decided not to do any advertising other than going out and meeting and writing letters to these people that had contacted the church. I had the privilege, myself and in Sanford, to go to Jerry Calton's house. Knocked on the door. Jerry came to the door and we said, we're from the Voice of Prophecy, and we're here to invite you to a series of meetings. She said, I've been waiting months. Those of you who have knocked on doors, what, what better thing can you hear? The last time I was at the Raleigh Church, Jerry was teaching a junior Sabbath school class. We're talking about planting seeds this morning. Some of you saw me tote this little fellow in this morning. This is a pack of seeds. I've never planted them. I've had them for years and years. Think about it. These seeds have to be sown to germinate. As long as they remain in this pack, they will never become this beautiful little plant here in front of you. And this little plant was planted a few weeks ago. It's got its first little bloom right here. And in about eight weeks, this little plant will be full of fruit. All because I planted a seed. God has called us to be sowers. That's what the parable said this morning. To sow the seeds of life everywhere. That was the purpose of the parable. To tell us that it's our responsibility to sow the seed. And there's so many ways that you can do this. I was reading uh, in the Testimonies, Volume 5, a few weeks ago. And I ran across a man's name, Harlan Page. The author said he was just a poor mechanic, very little education. But Harlan was a Christian who sowed the seed of God's word. I thought to myself, who is this man, Harlan Page? And of course, as all of us who are in that savvy, right, I googled who is Harlan Page. And I came up with a book. It was entitled, uh, it was a biography that was written about uh, Harlan, it was entitled, The Power of Prayer and Personal Effort for the Souls of Individuals. How about that for a title for a book? In this book, it recorded some of the letters that Harlan had written to people that he had met and that were in his life. And I want to read just a few words from one of those letters today. It was a letter that was written to his sick niece, Sally. He said, Dear Sally, sleep not. Take no rest day nor night till you have obtained peace with God. Delay, delay not a moment. No future time will be more favorable. Call upon God today without ceasing. And if you perish, perish pleading for his mercy. Let nothing divert your attention. Nothing but love impels me to write you. Will you inform me what progress you are making with affection and esteem? Harlan Page. Sally was saved as a result of Harlan's letter and his concern for her salvation. And she provided a copy of it to the editor who wrote Harlan's biography that I've read to you from today. Over a hundred people in Harlan's short life answered the call to become Christians. And each of them provided a copy of the letters that he wrote to them. A poor mechanic with little education who sowed the
the siege with his pen and paper. After reading Harlan's letter, I was impressed to write my granddaughter, Jessica. You heard me ask for prayer for her this morning. I've not seen her in years. She's taken a very dark road in her life. I've been worried about her, and I've asked several of you to pray for her. I included in my letter several things. I sent her some money because I knew she needed some money. I sent her a copy of a little book of John a copy of Steps to Christ, a copy of my testimony that I gave you this morning. I had written it out months ago, and a copy of another testimony from a young lady that I know that she had given me a copy of. I had asked her for it so that I could send it to Jessica. And on Christmas Eve, I got a text from Jessica, the first one in years. She said she wanted to come see me. And spend the night. She texts me again this week. I want to read you the word she said. She said, I miss you, Papa. I love you more than you know. I will let you know when I can come. It's just the first step. But she responded to the seed that I planted. We're talking about planting seeds today. Um, I've put together a mailing list. Um, I've been writing down my neighbors' mailbox numbers, finding out their names, and I'm going to send them a seed. Remember the one that was sent to... uh, Uh, Laura Cox, I'm going to send the same one. This one is addressed to my closest neighbor, Yong Hai Kong. Cindy and I took some tomatoes by their house a few months ago. We told them that when we had the chance, we're going to have them over and cook some green tomatoes for them. They they asked us for some southern cooking, and so Cindy is going to invite them over here in the next few months to do that. But in here, I've got a note. It says, hello, neighbor. Been missing you. Lost your phone number when I lost my phone. Please text at me again. Gave her my phone number. Uh, we still want to have you over to eat green fried tomatoes when the weather warms up. I have enclosed something I think you will enjoy reading. See you soon. Jeff and Cindy Collier. And then it's a copy of the special edition of the Signs of the Times about the Sabbath in a copy of the special edition about the second coming. How can anyone be offended by that? And suppose that they don't read it. That's what the parable of the sower tells us, right? There's going to be some people who just don't read it. But I want you to tell you there's something special about this. When they open this envelope, they're going to hear God's voice. And it's going to say, you need to read this. Just like I heard that voice, Jerry heard that voice, Carla heard that voice, Laura heard that voice. Each and every one of us heard that voice that said, this is important. Read this. In the book, Christ Object Lessons, it says this. In our life work, we know not what shall prosper, this or that. This is not a question for us to settle. We are to do our work and leave the results with God. And God makes us this promise in Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, 11, he says, My word that goes forth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. That's a promise I'm going to claim when I mail this. In fact, everything that I send, I claim that promise. There's so many ways you can spread the seed, sow the seed. My friend Gerald Moret, some of you remember him, posts a scripture every day on Facebook. Every day I see people read it and like it and share it. Gerald is planting seeds every day 
by just posting God's Word on Facebook. And there's limitless ways that you can plant seeds. This year I've been, uh, this past year, I, I read and studied the first five books of the Old Testament and, of course, the four Gospels and the New and the first 90 Psalms. And when I started that study, I thought, wouldn't it be neat to write down the text that jumps out at me when I read these? And so I made a little devotional with all of the text that I read. Here's January the 24th. Lift up your heads from Psalms 24.9. O you gates, lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hearts, Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. I'm going to give this to my son for his birthday coming up in a few weeks. Planting a lot of seeds when I give that to him. I don't know if any of you have heard the group on our radio session. They're entitled Called Out. Uh, it's two brothers, David Bledsoe and uh, his brother Don. And I had a chance to interview David. In fact, David sang in our church a few years ago. Um, um, David's a retired plumber. In 2003, he was sitting in the pew at the Straightway Baptist Church. His son is pastor of that church. The sermon was entitled, The Body of Christ. He was talking about the role each of us play as church members, as parts of the body of Christ. One the leg, the other the foot, the other is the eye. As David was listening to the sermon, he asked himself what his role had been in the body of Christ. He told me that he realized that he was a wart. A wart. Just a wart not doing anything. He decided to change that. He was raised singing in the church. He had a good singing voice. So did his brother. And so the two of them formed a little gospel singing group. Their goal in the beginning was just to sing at rest homes for the patients. Soon they were getting invitations to other churches. Then they added a bass and a tenor. And soon they were singing all over the southeast. They sang at the gospel convention in Kentucky in front of 25,000 people. Every time that I've been to one of their concerts, David always closes with an invitation to those that are lost. I've seen so many people saved at those meetings. David is planting the seeds of the gospel everywhere that he goes. We're talking about planting seeds today. Sydney and I have decided to make this our ministry as well this year. Uh, yesterday, we put one of these on a gas pump here at a local gas station. We just I'll show you how we put it up there in just a minute. But we put these everywhere. We're just planting seeds. Uh, we put them in truck stops. We put them in restaurants. We mail them with our bills. We take them everywhere we go. And why do we do that? We're told, and you'll see where this title for my sermon came from today, uh, let all be fully prepared to spread the light by word and by pamphlet. There should be hundreds of these little tracks scattered as the leaves of autumn. I have ten oaks and poplar trees in my yard, and each November I experience the leaves of autumn. The ground is covered with leaves. God wants us to cover Burlington with these tracks just like the leaves of autumn. In that quote that I just gave you, she says we need to be fully prepared. Now think about it. Wouldn't it be foolish for a farmer to go to the field to sow without taking any seed? Isn't that foolish? And yet we do this every day. 
We leave home and go out into the world as sowers with no seed. Beginning today, I want to change that for you. Cindy and I decided this year to become sowers here in Burlington. And anywhere our travels take us, I found a case. And I put into this case all kinds of things. There's several copies of Steps to Christ. Several copies of the little book of John. Invitations from Amazing Facts to do Bible studies. And of course, the little glow tracks. Cindy puts them in these little plastic things, and she writes on them, read me. When we stop at Walmart and get out of the car, the car next to us, we just slide one under the window. So who's going to be offended by that? We don't put them on all the cars, just the car next to us. When we stop at the gas station to get some gas, we just take, when we hang the pump back up, we just take one of these and we just hang it right there on the pump. You know, I've never come back and found one on the pump. Someone comes and gets them. We have tape to put them up with. If we see a bullet board somewhere, laundromats, back of, of uh, tractor supply, back there at the board at Lowe's, we just take a thumbtack and we just stick one up on the board, or two, or three. I take them with me everywhere we go. And since January the 1st, we've given out over 100. Scattered all across North Carolina, South Carolina, out in uh, Georgia, Alabama. We've been all the way to Texas. Everywhere we stop, truck stop, we put some out. Put them on the gas pumps, wherever. That's what it means to be fully prepared, is to always have these with you. How can you sow seed if you don't have the seeds with you? And I promise you that if you just pray, God, show me where to plant this seed today, he will answer that prayer. I delivered tomatoes two weeks ago. And when I got there, I got ready to leave, and I always take a right and get on the interstate. And I heard that little voice. It said, turn left. And that just goes right into downtown Durham. And I know nothing about downtown Durham. But I listened. And I just drove, and it came to the end of that road, and it was only one way I could go, was left. And when I turned left, there was a man sitting there in a wheelchair by the road. And I heard that little voice again, this is him. I reached into that bag, I pulled out steps to Christ, and I put $10 in it, and I rolled the window down, and I handed it to that, that man. He didn't know what to say. But he said, thank you. And I could just tell he sincerely appreciated what I had just done. We're talking about sowing seeds today. And Cindy and I decided, since we're doing this, we want to invite you to join us in this. Um, We put together some packs. Um... For you. They're on the way out today. I want you to pick them up, and I'm going to show you what's inside. There are two envelopes for you to mail to your two closest neighbors, or the two neighbors that the Lord impresses you to mail it to. Just ride down the street, pick two. If you don't know their name, it's really simple. You address it to my neighbor. I'm positive that brochure I received 44 years ago did not have my name on it. It had resident. 
because I had only moved to that apartment a few weeks before. No one knew my name, but God did. There's some invitations in here to Amazing Facts Bible School. You can send them to someone else, or you can put their name and address and mail them in. Pick one of your neighbor's names, write their name in and their address, and mail it in. And what they'll receive is they'll get this letter, a really nice letter, from Amazing Facts. And inside, two Bible studies and a beautiful little letter that says, we'd like for you to take our Bible course. Welcome to the Amazing Facts Bible Correspondence Grace course. Also, in this little pack that we've got for you out there, there are uh, those two editions of Signs of the Times that I told you for you to mail. There's a copy of Steps to Christ. There's a little book of John and five glow tracks. My favorite is Talking with God. This one is the chapter on prayer from Steps to Christ. The Gift of Joy is a chapter from Desire of Ages. The Promise of Peace is from the Steps, Steps to Christ. They have hundreds of titles for you to pick from. And then, of course, to keep from them getting rained on, little packages to put them in. I want you to think of the numbers here. If 20 of us, that's how many I count today in here, take those packs out there, there's 14 little items in each pack. And if you do the math, I think that comes up to about 240 or 50 pieces of literature. If you just do one a day, that's it, one a day. Just the people in this room, one a day. That's 7,000 people's lives we would touch. If I had been doing this for the last 44 years, I would have already touched 50,000 people's lives. What a waste of time for me that I haven't been doing this for 44 years. And if every Seventh-day Adventist, all 25 million of us, just do one a day, we would reach the entire world's population in less than eight months. When I came here to Hall River in 1997, we had a new pastor. His name was Mike Steenhoven. Any of you remember Mike and Rose? Sweet people. Our church was about two-thirds full then. I left in 2010, and we were down about half full. Last week, I counted 17 people. I think I counted 21 today. In 1 Corinthians 3, 6, Paul says this. He says, I planted. Listen closely. I planted, but God gave the increase. That verse is simple, but it has two parts to it. I read it to say that unless we plant, God doesn't give the increase. And we haven't been planting for a long time. I believe that that is what God is calling us to do here at Hall River. If we wish to grow, if we want to see these seeds filled again, it's time for us to start planting the seeds. I want to see this church grow. And it can only happen if each of us start to sow the seeds of the gospel. Today, God's giving you seeds to sow. And the promise that if we sow the seeds, He will give the increase. As a church, I want us to start praying every day for God to fulfill this promise. Let's make it our goal to see this baptismal pool used behind us this year. And once we baptize one person, then let's make it two, and let's make it three, and let's make it four. Paul said, I planted, but God gave the increase. 
I want to close today by talking about a special person. Many of you remember Kay Martin. Kay? I will tell you about Kay. Kay was a retired police officer, but she also a member of this church. When she retired, she decided she wanted to minister to others. And she took on the ministry there at WBYJ radio station. She came to me and asked me to help her, and I did. We worked together for two years back in 2013 and 2014. Kay made it her ministry by finding others who needed promoting on the radio station. That was how Kay chose to sow her seeds. I'm going to give you an example. One Tuesday night, that's when we did our live show there at WBYJ, Kay and I interviewed Gloria McCauley of God Did It Ministries. Gloria was a recovering addict, recovered addict, I should say, and she had started this ministry to reach out to young ladies that had found themselves in the same situation that she was in. It was an incredible interview. I remember it like it was yesterday. As Glory told her story and then made a direct appeal to the listening audience if they needed help. In the coming weeks and months, Kay started getting sick. She was diagnosed as Duke as having a failing liver. She was put on the liver transplant list. I was at the church in High Point, Sabbath morning, March the 14th, 2015 when I got a call from her husband, Doug. He told me, Jeff, if you want to see Kay alive, you need to come right now. I got up out of my seat there in the church, and I went to Durham. When I arrived, Kay was sitting up in bed, smiling, talking to her sister Jackie and her daughter Lachey. She held my hand. She told me all the loose ends that we needed to take care of there at the radio station. It's not a good conversation in that regard because I knew what she was telling me. She knew she wasn't going to make it. She talked to Jackie. She talked to Lachey. And then she looked at me and she says, do you remember that song that I like so much we play at the radio station? And I knew exactly which one she was talking about. I said, yeah. She said, would y'all sing it for me? And to those of you who've heard me sing, bear with me here. We started to sing. I dreamed I went to heaven. You were there with me. We walked upon the streets of gold. Beside the crystal sea, we heard the angels singing. Someone called your name. As we got to that part of the song, Kay smiled and closed her eyes. And she lost consciousness forever. She died later that day. I'll never forget that moment with Kay and that smile on her face. She closed her eyes for the last time. After Kay passed away, I got a phone call from Gloria McCauley of God Did It Ministries. She said, I've got someone I'd like for you to meet and interview on the radio station. I set up the interview for the following Tuesday night. This young lady, her name was Sandy, told me in our listening audience her story. She was a drug addict and she was working as a prostitute to, pray for her, to pay for her drugs. She had lost everything, her son, her home, her family. She was living out of the car in the motel room she would rent to work out of. She was between customers on a Tuesday night about a year before when she turned on the radio there in the motel. She turned the dial to find a station. She heard a voice. It was Kay's. She listened to the interview with Gloria, and she heard God's voice telling her to write down that phone number. She did. The next day, she called Gloria, and Gloria invited her over for an interview. She was accepted into the program. A year later, she had a good job. She was going to community college. She had an apartment. She had gotten back her son. Best of all, she was now a Christian. 
and volunteering her time at God Did It Ministries. Someday, Sandy is going to walk the streets of gold. and She's going to go up to Kay. She's going to tell her, thank you for giving up your time. Thank you for giving to the Lord because mine was a life that was changed. When Kay passed away, I asked myself, who is going to take up her ministry? Who would do the work that Kay did? Who will plant the seeds that she was planting? And I know the answer now. The answer is me and you and you and you and you. As we enter the second month of a new year, I encourage you to pick up and open the packet of seeds that we've given you and sow them like the seeds, seeds of autumn. They're on the table as you go out today. Please pick up one. Take it home with you. Have it in your car. Have the seeds with you so you can sow them. We're living in the last hours of this last generation. I encourage you to become a sower this year in 2021. And I promise you, if you will ask God, He will show you who, where, and how to plant those seeds. Let us pray. Father, the fields are ready. There's ground to plant all around us. Help us to wake up out of our sleep and realize that we're the last generation that will ever live on this planet. And you have given this awesome responsibility to be sowers for you. I pray you this morning, Lord, that you will inspire us to be sowers of your word. And Lord, just sow us who and where and when you want us to sow these seeds and we will be about our Father's business. Thank you, Lord, for Kay's ministry and our memory of her. Amen.